What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the Boldly a- Watch. Where we do lots of nineties dance moves. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna knock my desk over. I just talked about this. <laughs> no, no, we all punch our again. cameras and have to end yeah. it. <laughs> That'd be bad. <laughs> Not today. How, uh, did we all do some push-ups before this recording? Mm-hmm. Yep. It really changes the uh, the timbre of my voice. You can hear the push-up. <laughs> the, the Jeffrey timbre mm-hmm. of your voice. <laughs> I'm out of there. It's deeper. It's canceled. I guess that's the tonal. Uh, <laughs> I regret everything. Should we start this episode over? <laughs> well, I mean, we start right into the action, Becca, just like this episode does. We don't even know what's going on. We start right into an energy storm, right? <sighs> it's crazy. We're on this planet. Wiping down. Give me 15 Wiping minutes down there. Down. That's all I need because yeah. indicators are out. Yeah. Uh, tricorders only have five meters of range. What is this place? This is a crappy away mission. Let me tell you, no one yeah. volunteered for this, but Riker probably Riker. convinced him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, they put down one of those. Um, what are they called? Transporter beacons. Mm-hmm. Uh, what yeah, is that it, thing? The enhancement. Uh, oh dang! Because it, it, it enhances it's a the beam out lock. marker is what they called it. A beam out marker. Hmm. Hmm. But they call it something specific later on. It's like a transporter. Yeah. Don't they? Or... They have to put them in like a triangle or yep. something, right? Yeah. Isn't that a thing with them? Exactly. Did they do that they... previously, or am I just remembering that from having watched Star Trek a lot? They, I, they might have done it previously on some of those like stealthy away mission things. Mm-hmm. Like we need to do this, or in the future we'll see that too. They just want to make it more complicated so that a beam out <laughs> isn't the answer for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, uh, sometimes you need a neutrino signal, which I think you're thinking of, but that's not what they brought down on this away mission. They came down with just a, we can tell it's rough down there. I need a stick that tells you where to beam me out from. Yes. Also, these poor, we just got these new uniforms. I know. And they go through so much in this planet, especially Geordi's, <laughs> that poor yellow uniform. Yeah, he falls into a pit of mud. And I really oh. think they should start making these uniforms waterproof. Also, the fact that they don't have like parkas, they're head and neck. Yeah. Well, yeah. Cold. There is no weather gear for these I guys. I mean, there is. There are like exosuits and other things. They just don't use them on. I mean, in the world, they, those things exist, but costume wise. Right. It's still like them uniforms. going out in the snowstorm without a jacket kind of situation. It's like, yeah. give them one. Um, also, but yeah. I have a problem with them de- beaming down a three person away mission. I guess they look nice in a little triangle on <laughs> the uh, transporter pod panel. Hmm. But um, you need the buddy system. The buddy system is important. Yeah. If I were captain we of the see. ship, head of the away mission, I would have them in pairs and have their mittens separated with a, uh, connected with a string. Mittens? <laughs> yeah. So you don't lose they them. need mittens. No, and I got gotcha. you. Yeah, for work. Yeah. I have yes. a lot of problems with just the logistics of how this away mission went down. Well, I mean, we all know not to split the party, yet that's the first thing we decide to do, especially yep. when we have low visibility and tricorder range. But yeah, sure, we go for it. <laughs> uh, Worf finds an injured Romulan. Uh, Jordy finds a hole. And right. Riker finds nothing. And so Riker and Worf have that small window to get out, and they search for Jordy, can't find him, but they have to get out. Of course, uh, like, Worf wants to stay. Riker says, no, we got to go. And so Worf they has a very low opinion of Romulans. Very and low. He meets one again after, you know, basically just seeing them when they murdered his parents. This one starts by choking him. <laughs> well. Yeah. We understand I his aversion, right? They do a sort of interesting bait and switch here, I think, because we've seen sort of this format before of like an officer gets stranded with either an enemy or someone that they can't communicate with. Uh, and it seems like we're going to get Worf and a Romulan on the planet. And then it sort of switches it around and like, oh, we're going to get Geordi on planet with a Romulan. That's mm. really interesting, too. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. The Romulan like tries to grab Worf's throat, and Worf very slowly pulls back an open palm. It's like I'm gonna do it. Um, <laughs> all right, tell me. you're not gonna let me go. I okay, and restraint. <laughs> yeah, breaks yeah, this guy's yeah. face, and uh, he and Riker drag him out and throw him unceremoniously to the ground too, knowing how injured he is. And they beam out of there, and we have Jordy stranded on the planet. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, uh, we learn an interesting thing about ghosting. Doesn't mean not texting back in this world. Mm -hmm. It's phantom signals from the for the transporter chief to try and parse out 
what's a real body and what's like a, a fake out body. Mm-hmm. We'll beam the ghosts up anyway. Beam up those ghosts. <laughs> that would be so so. That'd be such a big issue if they kept beaming up ghosts. Like, no, you're not the person we're looking for. Gotta Beaming go back. You back. <laughs> I am just nope. looking for salvation. Help me. Good luck in fulfilling <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> this is a very intense representation of a planet. We have come a long way since season one green screen planets where mm-hmm. they don't even put anything on the green screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's just in the background. A yeah. well-lit Ooh, map. The sky it's is green. The green Weird. planet. <laughs> <laughs> wow! All of the gradient of their sky is just one solid, well-lit color. <laughs> uh, yeah. But this, there was like a lot of intense storming. My my beef is more with the costume department not stepping up to what oh. what these wind machines were up to. Oh sure, yeah. There were Wait, a lot of like, environmental effects that were pretty cool, like practical effects that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Jake, don't make me say parkas one more time. Oh, the fact that they should have had parkas. I don't think that's a costumer's choice. Like they only they only make the costumes for what they're told. Like that's a writing choice, right? Like they should give them that. That I bet it was a budget thing too. After you Mm -hmm. said how expensive these costumes were. Well, yeah, and they they can't. They're gonna dry clean all that mud off of him. Like, what's the deal with that? Yeah, I wondered if there is like a costumer's trick or uh, or something like that. Maybe in the theater, I I have a degree and I haven't thought of it. But in (laughs) film. Of like something that looks like mud but comes out of fabric easily for scenes like this. You know what ketchup. I mean? It's not ketchup for <laughs> sure. <laughs> ketchup mixed with spit. Ooh. <laughs> what? Try it. I don't know. I just want to see if people do it. And then they send me Twitter pictures like. I mean, I, I have a degree, but use ketchup and spit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an advice podcast. <laughs> Do you want to get your uniform dirty? <laughs> Catch up yeah. and spit. Yeah, try it. <laughs> anyway. we're, we're met with two dilemmas, right? Uh, Jordy's Jordy's stranded. We don't even know that he's going to be stuck with another Romulan for the first act, actually, first right. couple acts. In oh, fact, Jordy has to. Well, there's some suspicion because Picard does mention like, are there more? Whoa. And we the Romulans coming are, back to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We keep coming back to it to a point that we we figure something's going on. But this guy uh, told us he wasn't going to tell us the truth, mm-hmm. and that he was the only Romulan on the planet. <laughs> Those are the two pieces of information we have from him. I'm gonna put them together. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't take a whole uh, holodeck episode with a Sherlock scenario to figure out what's going on for sure. Um, Jordy has to improvise down there and actually he find Sherlock's some... his way out of this. Hole, yeah. Though. I liked how it's that turned out. I thought he was making a fire for himself. And then when there was a reveal of that, he's making climbing picks. I was yeah. like, this is brilliant. I love this choice. What an engineer. With his visor, he saw in the walls of this mud hole he fell into, he saw that there was like a cheater, cheetah rainbow pattern that was really mm. cute. I would print <laughs> and inside it, it was like gold. He digs a trench, puts the gold in, uses his tricorder to melt Amazing. it down. Yeah, bada bing, bada boom. And Jordy is free soloing, soloing before it was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I made the note, like making metal picks to climb out of a pit. And that is Starfleet engineering. It mm-hmm. makes you like, I, I was so proud of him. Mm-hmm. He could have um, made two of them and made it out a did. lot easier. He, he did. did make two. Oh, okay. Sorry. Too they only showed the forging soloing. of one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, in the extended cut, they'll show both forging. Cool, 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 cool. In the extended cut, he made four, and he put two on his boots that are covered in sand. <laughs> and Amazing. Full of sand. That's how he got all the sand in there. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, back on the ship, we learn that the Romulans are on their way, answering the distress call that the Enterprise had initially answered. So, like, we get a little bit of like a retroactive explanation for this because Picard explains that. We found a distress beacon, and mm-hmm. it's on an abandoned Federation planet, and now we found Romulans there. So mm-hmm. that's explained later. But uh, Intercepting a message saying, hey, we're coming your way, dude. But what's never explained in this episode, and Picard is on to, is that there is a reason that they were exploring a Federation planet, and they're not telling us everything. Yeah, I mean, oh, I think I it's think- safe to assume that, like, they're spying. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the assumption that everyone is making. And then uh, they prove us right in you shouldn't trust the Romulans throughout the episode. 
Amen. <laughs> uh, so we also get a little crusher in this episode because she's trying to nurse the first Romulan we meet back to health in Med Bay, the one that choked out Worf, and is like, <laughs> we need compatible ribosomes. This, yes. is, this is the thing. Who's got a ribosome? Um, do you think it's like A, B, and O types of ribosomes? Ribosomes like, are real things, right? Yeah. That's, but, that's the real thing. That's what DNA is made out of? Right. Uh, yeah, it's in DNA. Or in RNA. RNA. Right? That's, what R, that's what RNA stands for. And is, yeah. Uh, We're okay. not scientists. Yeah. We have a degree in theater, right? <laughs> I said, right? Ribosome is when you miss spit, spit and ketchup. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. Um, Based on my studies. Uh, she also figures out that perhaps magnetic fields on this planet eat away at one's brain yeah so we we learned that like there's nervous system damage right and so Jordy's prop they theorize Jordy's probably experiencing something like that too down on the surface yeah um also her hair did she just come back from the salon right before coming into work like it's longer it's long and yes yeah, very long and it's also like really done up yeah, well, I think that that's hair. one of the fantasies about being on a starship, too, at this era is probably just a button push that you can have whatever hair you want. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> one can only imagine what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> Blue-haired boy and pink-haired girl. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you get what you want. Uh, it would be so also, much easier. <laughs> so um, Picard and Riker are in Med Bay, and they're like, we got to question this guy. Wake him up. And whatever Crusher gives this dude who's dying to wake him up for like five minutes, mm. that's what I want in the morning instead of coffee. It's good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> he seemed pretty groggy. He uh, Riker's in his face right away. And so, you know, like yeah. he and Worf very much have like a, all right, fuck these guys kind of situation, right? And so he's like, we're on board. We're treating your injuries. What were you doing? And he refuses to give up any information and admits that right away. What's wild is that this is the first time we've seen real aggression towards mm -hmm. a whole species from Federation participants. Yeah. It's and that they have a ceasefire with too, right? Yeah. Like it's not like they are active war with these people. It sounds right. like active, like an active cold war. Cold war. Yeah. Yeah. It, what I think they're trying to do is really establish the danger that the that the Romulans present that like even just one getting a glimpse at like the computers is super bad news. So you really have to be aggressive in, in their face to to show how dangerous they are. It's like as if we had a Borg captured, you know, there would be force fields up and everybody would be mm -hmm. freaking out. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't think they've justified how dangerous the Romulans are quite yet so that it does look a little extreme they set that standard a little bit when like that guy wakes up on the planet and looks at Worf, and the first thing he does is lunge at him yeah, so yeah. that's established and i also like the contrast as we talked about in the borg episodes where they i think they have captured borg early on right or like they they had them quarantined and the borg just ignored them right yeah that's such a fun contrast to show their danger. Um, There's but yeah, also these... when we encounter other species of uh, most of the time, it's like we're discovering them or they're new to, to the Starfleet lifestyle or whatever. This is the first time that we have an enemy. These are the yeah. enemy of Starfleet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Designated as such like that cold war is still, I mean, it's like we, cold war is episode. an inactive war, right? By definition, but it's still like happening. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. And of course, the Klingon must have been at odds with Romulans for Romulans to have murdered Worf's parents, one can assume. Right. Well, I can't, I don't know the exact timeline of when alliances and ceasefires occurred, but I assume there was like the Romulans and the Klingon Empire don't have such an agreement. No, is that but, safe to say, but, Xander? Uh, it's because the Klingons sided with the Federation. Uh, and I think it, it was to prevent something with the Romulans. Like that was the thing that pushed the Klingons and the Federation to work together. I yeah. could be wrong, but that seems right. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy. Yes. Is my friend. <laughs> well, we start to learn like a little bit more about Worf's animosity towards him. And it becomes pretty obvious in the third act or actually Crusher even says like, I can't find ribosomes for this guy that worked. None of the Vulcans on the ship uh, have them, but right. turns out you, you handsome devil, you do. And she tries to talk, talk him into it, but he is not having it. I mm. love how they handled all of this. I thought Same. this was a great discussion point, uh, plot point, and how, how they handled the resolution of it as well. Mm -hmm. I thought it was mm -hmm. surprising and real. And mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, right? I thought it was really good. Worf lets him die. Yeah. And Picard refuses to command him to help this guy live, which yeah. Picard seems to have a real distaste for Romulans as well, even right. though his, um, you know, uh, utilitarian, what's the word I'm looking for? Like Picard is a good guy that like always wants to help people. Right. So, Equal altruistic. Uh, Ultra, yeah. thank you. Um, but in this case, he was like, "Okay, well, we can't make you." Yeah, I mean, he doesn't. Uh, could make you. You're saying I have to make you. I'm not gonna. Make you. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. You're right, Becky. He doesn't. He doesn't um, appeal to the empathy side of it. He appeals to like, he, look, the ship is in danger by this. So by saving this guy's life, you're putting the ship in less danger. And Worf's like, I understand. And I will say, yeah. I was definitely like my jaw dropped. I was because I was yeah. waiting for the TV ending where right. Worf finally comes around to it, right? And yeah. so I should read what they said about um, this in Memory Alpha because this got some pushback from the staff when they found out it was written like this, including from Michael Dorn. Uh, let's see. The plot point oh. of Worf letting um, Patak die by refusing blood met great resistance among some of the writing staff and Michael Dorn when it was suggested by Michael Pillar. Dorn commented, quote, I called the producers and said I didn't agree. I thought giving blood was the honorable thing to do. I thought that people would look at Worf as a murderer. The producers felt that Worf was getting to be too human, just a guy with a big head. When the opportunity came for them to show that Worf was not human, that he was bound by the same morals, that he is not bound by the same morals we are, they felt it was a wonderful opportunity. End quote. In hindsight, however, Dorn saw the wisdom of the decision, remarking how it revealed the different sides of Worf. Pillar noted, quote, Rick Berman knew instantly it was the right thing to do. Once he was behind me, it was a race to the finish line. It was absolutely the right thing to do. You knew the audience was waiting for Worf to come around because they mm -hmm. always do that in television. Mm -hmm. But the character wouldn't do that, and I think we made a really good decision. At first, though, it was quite a shock and controversial, but you end up talking about the survival and survival among enemies. I think it was a natural character development. And well, that makes a lot of sense. At the same time, had they not found another Romulan survivor on the yeah. planet, it would have caused a war. Yeah. And so, I yeah, that they, is the, that's the loophole of that plot point, right? That's a yeah, good point and there. they really amped up the that you come away with that conclusion. They really amped up the stakes there of what the decision Worf was making and how that was so important. Mm -hmm. And the decision that Picard makes by not telling – by not ordering him to. Like they're dancing around this basic thing of – if you just say a couple of words, you're saving a person's life. You know what I mean? So I, I thought and this was handled really well. And mm -hmm, it was so, mm -hmm. so cool to explore. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't even a person's life that they were talking about. I mean, Picard was mm. pretty reckless to not order it. He cares yeah. a lot about Worf's opinion and Worf's feelings. But at the end of the day, Picard almost started a war too because Worf expected him to give the command. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's a question of Worf's autonomy, right? So, like, can a commander command you to give blood? It sounds like, yes, in Starfleet, you can. So, I don't know. It's an interesting independence like choice, too. I'm sure but... the rules of Starfleet forbid it i well, yeah. think they would yeah, allow i'm sure there's it. circumstantial stuff I, if i am sure if if we're talking in the world if this had come up to, against like a committee or something they would have forced him to order Worf to do something about it but also, in this small microcosm of command it's just picard's style well if we think of the episode with cloning mm -hmm. could Riker, who was opposed to being cloned and killed mm -hmm. his clone, have uh, been ordered by Picard to have let the cloning proceed. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think so. And I don't, I don't think a... so. I think Federation law would more mimic our own in that um, each person has their own autonomy. But that was a pretty cowboy move of Riker to like go killing off yeah. clones in that episode, it's don't you think? It's genetic material. I, I mean, know, but I, I I don't disagree with it. But like, I don't think there would be like a Federation standard of like that's cool. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the same thing that we run into with the Prime Directive. Whenever you try to set these conditions for every circumstance, you can't cover every circumstance. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows what you'd find a cloning facility or a couple of Romulans on on the planet? You know. It's these circumstances that make you question laws in the first place. You know, it's the intention behind it. It's not that Picard won't order Worf to do it. It's that it goes against his own moral code. And it's not because there are Federation laws that prohibit or in enforce him to do that. It's because he doesn't want to put his will on another person, especially someone under his command. Yeah. Totally. But um, I guess we don't know one way or the other whether... But what what Federation code would dictate here? Right. Uh, well, a couple if, more things about the Romulan vessel, though. We're learning that the warp ships are not to enter Federation space unless they're right. doing battle. And Picard <laughs> clearly states this. 
Also, I just want to say personal preference, Romulans have great style. I mean, they have the yes. blunt bangs, they have the high arches, and just those sharp <laughs> shoulder pads. Yep. Love and it And that's all. taken from the originals, too. Yeah, they look pretty close to TOS compared to most mm -hmm. things here. They didn't get as much of it. Like, they got a redesign for sure, but it's not a, a huge overhaul. Right. I think Madonna probably stole her original look from the... <laughs> <laughs> Probably. So Madonna there is a, might be a Romulan. We don't know. Might be, yeah. <laughs> How heavy is the Roman like theme within them? Because they call the, uh, Jordy calls him Centurion, right? Like, and yeah. I'm noticing more and more. There's like a lot of Roman calls in this. The, is that, you mentioned is that the thing? blunt bangs. It's very much the Caesar. Cut. Yeah. Well, that's and, well, well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's that old kind of classic look. Wait, yeah. hold on. Is a Caesarian section because they had a blunt cut of bangs that yes. is like the chomp that's... that they do in your abdomen. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> the baby comes out with a, a blunt bang. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Welcome oh, to biology talk. We know we learned that. Yeah. Yeah. Great. No, don't get me started. Cesarean sections are terrifying. They <laughs> cut your intestines and then sew it back together. Yeah, but they save so many lives. It it's... saved countless lives. It's very true. It's still freaky if uh, yeah. you have a uterus. Yeah, it's freaky that people grow inside of people. That's a weird that's process. True. Well, that's kind of all of most biology. Yeah, I know, you know but like sometimes you lay a seed or an most egg. Organic things. <laughs> we put you know, the egg inside. Yeah. I choose freaky. to lay eggs first. <laughs> <laughs> if only it was an option. And just be like, here are my eggs. Leave your <laughs> eggs on the table and run. We'll get there one day, I bet. <laughs> Well, I can tell that nobody's telling any lies because their shoes are sand free. This is <laughs> a favorite line quote. Ever. <laughs> I never tell a lie when there's I sand, in, sand my in, shoes. in my shoes. <laughs> yep. Um, and then there's like, uh, so Jordy's getting held at gunpoint by the second. Oh, wait, wh hold on. Let's go back. Yeah, it all happens. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Becca. Wesley has a plan. Mm -hmm. Wesley's right. like, uh -uh, me and Jordy, we get it. I know if I send a neutrino signal, yes. Jordy's going to see it in his visor and he's going to be able to head to that point um, and we'll, we'll send down a, a beacon thing so he can go stand by it and then we'll know to beam him up after he futzes with my thing I sent. Yes. Um, that's the plan. Yes. Really well Me and Jordy, we get it. I love that. We, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a... <laughs> Wesley gotta think, Crusher. Worry. Yeah. He'll know. He'll know. He speaks nerd. He does. Yeah, we speak nerd. Um. But then uh, this other Romulan boots first steps out from behind the crevice and starts boots following first. Jordy, knocks him out, takes his uh, phaser and is holding him at phaser point. <laughs> when we get the great line about sand and his shoes. Um, and Jordy's like, come on, man. I'll, I'll yeah. help you out. You want to get off this planet too. I I'm pretty sure the yeah. Enterprise will just return you to the Romulan yeah. ship. Um, Look at my uniform. Look at the state I'm in. <laughs> Come on. This is a muddy uniform. This thing costs $3,000. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Jordy almost gets away when a rock slide specifically targets the Romulan. Because Jordy knows the number <laughs> one rule of rock slide safety, which is take one step out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> specifically targets. Yeah. But then Jordy helps him into a cave. It's like, Notably, hey, like... Dude? Like, he doesn't take the disruptor away from him. Like, that guy is injured, and Freezer. instead of grabbing the weapon, well, the, whatever, the weapon, he doesn't take right. the weapon away from him, and uh, he helps him up. And I was like, oh, I really expected Jordy to disarm him very quickly, but that's not yeah. how Jordy goes, and I like that difference. That's what Riker would have done, or Worf, for sure. Right, right. You could have done both, Jordy. You really could have done both. Because, <laughs> That's true. Uh, this Romulan wasn't really with it and picking up on the subtle cues of, see, I helped you, and just immediately points the phaser again. Like, yeah. you idiot. You are my <laughs> prisoner. Well, and this, like you had mentioned, this is direct contrast to how Riker and Worf and everybody was dealing with a Romulan sick on a hospital bed. And here's Jordy in a life-threatening situation, not presenting yeah. very aggressive, you know, maybe that's the tactic, but mm -hmm. it's the difference in attitude towards the Romulan, I think, that saves the day. And how he treats him entirely. He calls yeah. him by his first name. And like, yeah. he, he, like, once they realize what's happening to their bodies, too, from the nerve damage of uh, the electromagnetic fields on the planet, like, they, they start to care for each other. I mean, Jordy obviously leads that charge and eventually sure. um, Centurion, what's his name? Akra. Bakra falls yeah. suit.
Even after Bakra calls him a defective child that should yeah. not be allowed to live. Yeah. But I love that lesson, too, is like we have to get that Romulan way of speaking, which I guess is maybe even Roman in some way. Right. And then, like, mm. have Jordy show the contrast is like, well, look what I've been able to contribute. And it was because of Jordy that his life was saved. Right. Uh, a question of your opinion. Jordy is asked if he'd be blind without the visor. And when he says, yeah, he's he's blind, he is sad about it. And I don't think that's necessarily an accurate representation, you know. Hmm. Well, we have to take into account this is the future as well, and Jordy constantly lives with the visor on. So living as a blind person in this circumstance might be a different than someone today who might have that, you know, have different struggles and as part of their everyday life. There is struggle, of course, but I think that, I don't know, I, um, I'm not personally acquainted with any blind people, you mm. know, sh uh, shout out, you let's be friends. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I imagine... <laughs> If that were my life, I'd be like, no, whatever. I'm proud to be blind. This is who I am. I wouldn't be who I am if I right. were blind. So I thought that that was maybe not the acting choice I would have. It was like a really subtle, just the way. Yeah. I, say, I didn't really see the sadness. Yes, I'm but blind. I, yeah, I it agree. It was like a resignation about it. Oh. Really I don't think that's accurate. Well, he's also right. presented such a good, confident person in so many other areas where, he, like, the most – most plot lines involving Jordy don't even reference anything about his blindness. Like right. there's very little of it. And I love that for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because if every adventure he was in, he had his visor knocked out of his hands. It's like, yeah. geez, Hold no, on. no, thank you. Blind guy. In right. Here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also it wasn't that simple in this case too. He's had his sight for most of the time. And it wasn't just, it wasn't just a Jordy centric thing too. This guy had uh Bakra had issues with his nervous system too. So it was like a combination of different uh, challenges they had to overcome. Yeah. I thought it was well mind done. leading the lame of leg. Yeah. <laughs> well, because the solution is that they have to work together because right. uh, Bakra makes a good suggestion. How about you take whatever's in your visor and attach it to your tricorder? I don't know, dude. Figure it out. And he's mm -hmm. like, I can't see anymore. Right. I'm going to do it. These devices and don't speak to each do. other. This isn't season one. We can't just mash components together anymore. <laughs> We but, have to be able to see them to match them together. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought this was this was really clever because it is exactly the scenario. We see this in a microcosm of it's two machines that don't speak to each other. We have Jordy and the Romulan who don't speak to each other. They have to come together and fuse their parts and make sure that, it's two, <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Okay. Uh, see, that's where I'm Jordy was talking. looking for love in all the wrong places. You're still good there at you go. that in. Like, it just, you're now. Analogies get sexual so quickly. I never I know. And yeah. first, I was going to compliment the really good analogy, and then I just wanted to play a little, you know, jazz music. <laughs> Brahms number f Hungarian yeah. dance number five. Riker shows up with a trombone. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should so we go back to the ship when you... when the card makes a very serious announcement when the Romulan vessel comes into their airspace, space, 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 yep. space, space, space. <laughs> Federation space. Well, what, what what announcement are you referring to? Uh, the the vessels there, and they kind of realize like, uh oh, we can't beam Jordy up because he at the same time as the vessel is right. getting to the planet trying to save their dudes, then um, Picard or, or realizes that Jordy is at the beacon. His thing with mm. Wesley's plan worked, and uh oh, the Romulans are here, and we can't put our shields down to beam Jordy up. Also, there's another being there. But before that happens, before they know that, Picard uh, says to the Romulan captain, your dude's dead. Yeah. And it, it was like. That oh was a choice God. to say that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, well, and I... the response is, okay, dude, we're starting. He says yeah. uh, he was but the first to fall. Yeah, the, he yeah he never said anything explicit about we're gonna fight now, but he did say he was gonna be the first, which implies more, more. right? That, that more yeah. people I mean, will die. It and, is a really cool way of saying that the right. more are <laughs> gonna kill yeah, you. It's uh, just a classic one liner. I'm not I'm not splitting hairs. Uh, I'm splitting hairs to to remark that like it, w there's tension, but we don't know. Like guns are drawn, but no one's fired the first shot yet. So we're, there's there is that whole negotiation aspect. And also, like Picard made a really good point to him early on when he was said he was going to cross the neutral zone. He said, you know, when the when the 
uh, Romulan was still alive. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, I, I admire your, uh, what was it? Your devotion need, to a devotion single... to the press for pre- the pres- preservation of a life. Yeah. So stay over there. Yeah. And keep more lives safe. Like uh, the, the Picard deliveries in this were great in terms of all the negotiation he had to do to keep the Romulans from going nuts. Yes. Always. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then, uh, you know what I like that this show does so well is that as soon as a character is given a hint of information, they take it. And so we're never ahead of, uh, as the audience, we're not ahead of the characters being able to put it together and just saying, figure it out. Because Mm -hmm. as soon as that they realize that there's two life forms near the beacon on the planet, Riker says, there must have been another Romulan down there. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and like they were, they were kind of assuming that from the get go a little bit, but like they, they, they just as, after they asked the Romulan, and they're, he's like, no, they're like, all right, because yeah. <laughs> that Romulan had his customer service face on the whole time. <laughs> yeah, your snide tone tells me there's definitely more people down there. Yeah, I so thought then- at the end when because uh, it was a very dramatic moment where Picard was like, he's dead. I thought they were going to do something where it was like, that's my son or something more dramatic <laughs> to, to like tie them together. And I thought the switch from when he was like, oh, there's another Romulan. I'm going to I'm going to beam him up. The switch was like almost immediate to that customer service voice again, uh, which was either a really great acting choice on behalf of that actor or just I don't know. It felt a little hollow. As if I think it was deceptive. I think they yeah. were they did that intentionally because they're okay. supposed to be. I mean, they're not like conniving is a bat is like probably not the most accurate word, but you you see the the, the double the the face nature of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, I think you you know they're lying when when they right. when they ask, is there more Romulans here? Like, no, it was a one man ship. Like everybody in the audience, I feel like we were all like, okay, that's bullshit, true, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though we had known that there was going to be another one on there because we we kind of saw that coming. We, we saw that in the actor's performance as well. That was uh, Tomalak was the commander's name. Tomalak. Um, that was played by Andreas Katsoulis, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, he was, I don't know if you know him from, he was the one-armed man in The Fugitive. Did you ever see The Fugitive? Mm-mm. Great. Well, for those of you that have seen The Fugitive, he's the one-armed man. He was a he was a character actor in the '90s. He's great. He's in. He's. We're gonna see more of him this season, I believe. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, I think the mark of a true captain is your ability to monologue, and Picard <laughs> has that in spades here. He really nails it. In uh, here's what I'm gonna do. You're not even talking to me, and I don't know for sure if you're listening. Uh, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna do my whole spiel and convince you, even though I don't even know if you're receiving it right now. Mm-hmm. That's also a really hard call, not only for that actor, but also for like shooting that scene of like, okay, yeah. a dramatic monologue to a wall, right? Mm-hmm. And so, just you notice a lot of the, some of the cam work. They have him slowly approaching, and then he goes off screen, and then we have a new shot of him just staring at the ship. Yeah. on the view screen which i thought was a great choice it's like okay yeah we do have something for him to visually track i agree becca it takes it takes some strong acting chops to be able to pull that off and good yeah, job because so much of acting is uh making sure everything you're saying is landing on the other person mm-hmm. and so yeah and he's looking at a tennis ball suspended in the studio right now right tennis ball yeah yeah i i was thinking that exactly now thing. and i'm looking at a camera <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Acting over Zoom, not the best. Um, And you know what? I do have a complaint about the fact that, so the order of operations here, Picard Mm -hmm. says- Please excuse my dear uh, Aunt Sally. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Thank you, Pandas. So the order of operations for this mathematical equation is tell O'Brien, get ready to beam the people up from the planet. Tell Worf, we're going to put shields down. We're going to beam them up. We're going to put them, uh, put the shields back up, please. But He doesn't have these two officers do those things on their own volition, which would have made a lot more sense. You know, if I was captain to have shields down for minimal time and it was like, and now I give my speech and now uh, please shields down and now O'Brien send them up. Oh, because I saw it up, please. <laughs> very much as like a hostage negotiation tactic, or like a if or like a wild animal of like oh. I'm going to put the shields down. Mm-hmm. We're gonna mm-hmm. beam them very calmly. No I sudden see. movements. Yeah. Because he left the voice uh, to the yeah, so they could hear on. everything that was happening. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because he knew the other side was trigger happy, especially after having lost their officer. I saw that the same way. That was, yeah, uh, Picard delivers it in several instances. Going back to that conversation he had with Worf inside his um, 
ready room. Like mm. he he gives us the classic line of uh, weighing the needs of the few versus the many. Right. I love that that yeah. came back as well. The individual. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really powerful scene between him and Michael Doran. I, yes. I loved that scene and how. I think, you know, Worf is prejudiced. Worf is prejudiced yeah. against all Romulans. So, like, it's not just that he's different morals. It's like he's kind of wrong in this instance because mm -hmm. not all Romulans killed his parents. And so yeah, we have to live with that. That's a pretty intense thing to get over, too. You know, I, 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 yeah, absolutely. I, I understand why he feels that way, but it doesn't make it right. It I also that, um, kind of a missed opportunity in this episode to tell more of Worf's backstory of what what actually true. happened when his parents mm -hmm. died. Mm -hmm. Just saying. It, it also adds a little bit of flavor to these characters because from the get-go, almost everybody's, like, perfect. They're the perfect officers with all... Like, if they're flaws, they're minimum. Uh, this is, like, a big flaw that yeah. could be a signal of growth or character yeah. development. And so it's nice to have that. Well, it gives us room for character development. Exactly. But, yeah. What were you going to say, Becca? Sorry. I don't know. Great. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I just feel like... It, they made the right call. I, I can't yeah. emphasize enough how I agreed with Michael Dorn at first of like, whoa, where's the television ending to this? But I'm so glad they didn't. Yeah. Uh, I was I literally said out loud when I was watching this. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't do that very often in these shows. And I love that. I'm glad Michael Dorn uh, spoke his feelings. Right. And that also that he came around either right after they filmed or during filming, because you never want the actor to be in this position where they're like, I'm portraying something that makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. It's never fun. But uh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that he saw the reason why it was important to portray. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll see further growth from him because of this in future seasons. Growth. Growth. I thought you were going to start chanting growth. Oh. <laughs> growth, growth. <laughs> That's like, how you okay. cast that spell. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, great. Well, yeah. that was the enemy. I really enjoyed this one. I think this is one of my favorites of the season uh, as well so far. I like these moral questions. I think we're getting into some good discussion for just like the casual viewer of Star Trek. And, uh, and I like the questions that are getting asked. I just think more Jordy. More, more Jordy, Jordy, please. I'm also ready for another data centric episode. Sure. Yeah, um, we're getting little hints of data. And every time we're in there, we're like, ha, ah, <gasps> little Brent's finer. Always, yeah. And always more Guinan. Always more yeah. Guinan. Well, yeah, well, let's let her Guinan the way. That's the thing about Guinan is her episode or her um, contributions to the episodes are, are always so short, but always so sweet. Like yeah. it's kind of it, they make the right move by not doing too much. Right. They 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 give us just a little special. taste. Yeah, it yeah. is, and it should be special. That is yeah. a wise creator move. Is to just just let the special character come in occasionally and remind you that they're there. Don't, Her, she doesn't don't actually have a purpose on the ship except to run the restaurant Absolutely. bar. Yeah. So her her position is sage advice giver, and you can't overuse that. If we had sage wisdom at every turn, we'd never make our own decisions. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, uh, moving on to next week's episode, it's going to be The Price, mm -hmm. where the Enterprise hosts negotiations for possession of the only known stable wormhole wormhole oh. that's right do a little real estate bidding next I episode bid on that. <laughs> <laughs> i bid on that wormhole <laughs> 10 bucks going once going Space twice and engage <laughs> 